Hello everybody, and here we are again. So this is a lot of fun for me, and I was going to do something outside today, but it's raining. So we're back in the sanctuary, which is a very special place for me. And I'm glad that you're here to share in another one of my moments. So I'm going to do another of the 40 short stories. Um, and the name of this story is called Pierre's Part. So here we go. In the great studio, under the supervision of the master glazier, many workers were constructing the parts of a new window to be placed in the cathedral at Easter. Some were washing the glass with various tints and carrying the sheets to the kiln for burning. Some were cutting the glass sheets into small pieces to be fitted into the different parts of the window. Other workers had fragments of pasteboard patterns, all of one color, which they arranged on a sheet of glass of the same hue and cut into the desired shapes. Into the master's private room was a great cartoon or colored pasteboard picture of the window. There was also another complete pattern on which some of the most skilled men were fitting the mosaic as the glass was brought from the shop. Among the cutters was a youth, Pierre, who was working on an untinted glass of gray, greenish white. As he worked, he thought, this plain glass is dull work. Jean there, who cuts the deep red, must enjoy the, his heap of jewels, which glow like garnets and rubies, and Jacques yonder has amber and topaz, Guillaume has turquoise, Louis Sapphire, and Denise Beryl and Aquamarine. They are like rich misers turning over their heaps of gems. My work is cutting plain glass to fill the spaces about the picture. I suppose no one will notice my work, but the window is for God's glory and the spaces must be filled. I, as well as another, may do it and in the best way that I can. I wonder what the picture will be like when it is finished. The master is keeping it a secret, but I suppose that it will be a grand picture of saints and angels. Jean's ruby will make perhaps the shining satin and rich velvet of their robes, and Jacques yellow, their crowns and halos, and emerald will be the green glass and bedding, trees, and the others will be the same soiree, sky, and bright flowers, and I must fill the spaces. Yet unless they are well fitted, the picture will not be complete, mused Pierre, as he measured and cut with greatest care. Well, my lad, cried the master, coming to the bench of, at that moment, I am glad that you are doing your part so well. So, said Pierre, the master notices the plain glass which fits the spaces. As the winter days slipped by, the shop was bright with the colors of the glass. Pierre, in his corner, measured and cut the plain glass into pieces, large and small. Mere slender needles and bits, almost too tiny, for a man to hold between his fingers. As he worked, he thought of the spaces of life, unnoticed and yet to be filled by the services of humble workmen. Thinking along this line, he began to notice some of these small services, and it was he who often quietly found the missing bits of pattern and the borrowed tools in the workshop when the men were beginning to fly into a rage over these simple things. He went on doing small services of which most of the workmen never thought. During Holy Week, the men who did the final fitting of the mosaic and the setting into leaden frames were busy, but Pierre and the other cutters were having a holiday. During these days, Pierre walked in the forest and by the river noticing the early wild flowers with their stars of rose, yellow, and white. 
He observed that their little discs made the forest floor into a beautiful mosaic. He dipped his hand into the river, which was blue with the azure of the sky, and as the drops trickled off, one caught the sunshine and flashed with the colors of the rainbow. Scarce anyone would notice a drop of water, he thought, yet each single one is the thing of beauty. Before Easter came, the curving of the scaffolds were taken from the wall, and the new window was revealed with all its glowing colors. The fragments which Jean, Jacques, and the others had cut into meaningless pieces were now in their places, and full of meaning in the perfect window. Pierre noticed that the rich ruby of the robes and jeweled crowns and the emerald glass starred like the forest floor with rose and violet blossoms. In the highest medallion was the ascending Lord with two adoring angels. Pierre forgot the rest of the beautiful window when he saw the highest group gazing at the winged angels and the holy face. He knelt and worshipped like a pictured angel. At that moment, the master glazier came near and said, Well, Pierre, do you like the window? When he saw the look of reverence on the boy's face, he continued, Oh, do you indeed find it so beautiful? You have the soul of an artist, and you have done your part well. My part, exclaimed Pierre, surprised. He had not once thought of his own plain cutting as he looked at the splendid window. My part, where is it? There, on the highest, in the last medallion, answered the master, in the wings of the adoring angels and in the holy face. But the wings are not dull, gray glass, said Pierre. They are shining white, and the face is radiant and full of beauty. True, the master replied. I touched all with my brushes at the last. The shining radiance comes to the plain white glass when the work is quite finished and the sun is shining through. But the cutting and the fitting were your work. Oh, murmured Pierre, is that what happens to the bits of plain colored glass? At the end, does the master touch and transform it so that it seems no longer the work of the humble worker? The master understood Pierre in part and replied, No, you know not nor I, what is the highest nor the lowest, for every part is needed for the full beauty of the design. He who does well, the lowest, if such there be, is so much more fit to do the highest, if such there be. In God's mosaic, there is neither high nor low. And we have to remember that ourselves, because we are all part of God's beautiful mosaic in the world and we all have that special little spark of color that we add to the beautiful mosaic of God's realm. Let's shine like God wants us to shine and be God's people in our world. Have an amazing day. Love you all and God bless you.